he remained with Verrocchio well into his 20s. And Verrocchio, I think, spotted Leonardo very early, recognized his talents, nurtured them. And so we see the two of them in the 1470s working in tandem, working in partnership together. The baptism of Christ is a testament to this collaboration. Started by Verrocchio, this work was finished by Leonardo da Vinci, to whom the angel in the extreme left of the painting has been directly attributed. In parallel to this apprentice work, Leonardo da Vinci began to paint under his own name. The Benedictine monks from a Tuscan abbey commissioned his first work, The Annunciation. One of the fascinating things about the Annunciation is that we get a glimpse here of Leonardo at the start of his career. Even then, as a young man, he wanted to get everything right. He wanted to get the perspective of the hills right. So it was a convincing representation of what perhaps the Tuscan hills would have looked like. And crucially also, the wings of the angel of the Annunciation. These are the wings of someone who has looked at the wings of birds. I think Leonardo da Vinci's angel has a much better chance of flapping and, and flying and landing than that of any other angel that came before. In 1476, while Leonardo da Vinci was still working at his master's workshop, he received a commission for his first portrait of Ginevra da Benci, the daughter of one of Florence's most powerful families, close to the Medicis. Fifteen days after his initial visit, Nicola Barbatelli is contacted by Giancarlo Napoli. the restorer has finished cleaning the painting. The painting looked very different. It had snags, dents, cuts. We wondered where all this damage came from. The restorer told me that they had been covered by previous restorations, which he removed during his cleaning process. These marks are only the tip of the iceberg. When I started cleaning the painting, I noticed micro cracks, which were actually caused by the wood moving over the course of centuries. This is typical of Renaissance paintings. The restorator's conclusions are encouraging. But to confirm that the painting is definitely from the 16th century, it needs to undergo further investigation. This is the beginning of a major investigation, which will take the Lucan portrait across Europe. The first stop is the Innova Center in Naples, specialized in the scientific study of historical monuments and works of art. The Lucan portrait was given to Giovanni Paternoster, an expert in X-ray analysis. This technique makes it possible to determine the precise age of the pigments that were used.
You must bear in mind that from antiquity through the end of the 18th or 19th century, pigments basically didn't change. They were mineral pigments or sometimes vegetable or animal-based. It was only from the 18th or 19th century onwards that synthetic or organic pigments were developed. Right off the bat, one element of the portrait, the white feather decorating the hat, intrigues the researchers. Its extreme whiteness seems to indicate that it was painted with a synthetic pigment. It could prove that the painting doesn't date from the Renaissance. To be sure, the experts x-ray the entire painting. Let's look at the graph of the cheek. There you have it. You can clearly see the presence of antimony. There's no pewter and lead is very present. So it must be lead antimony, which could be a Naples yellow. The first traces of its use date back to the beginning of the 16th century. Naples yellow, vermilion red, indigo blue or azure green. These sometimes toxic substances were prepared by the apprentices. They were mixed with egg to obtain paint referred to as tempera grassa, which will progressively be replaced by oil painting at the end of the 15th century. Here we can clearly see that the black on the hat has a much higher magnesium iron ratio. So it is probably umber or something similar. This pigment was common during the Renaissance. But what about the feather? Its pigment is made of titanium dioxide, which wasn't introduced until the beginning of the 20th century. This means that the feather was painted at a later date, probably during a restoration. Aside from the titanium dioxide used for the feather, all the pigments in the Lucan portrait are compatible with Leonardo da Vinci's era. For Nicola Barbatelli, this is a very promising result. He decides to pursue his analysis with Filippo Terassi, a physics professor. It is time to examine the painting's base. The wooden panel is X-rayed. We were able to identify the type of wood, poplar. Poplar was a very popular tree, very sought after by many artists for its lightweight quality. In fact, the Mona Lisa was painted on poplar. The back of the Lucan portrait was made up of pieces connected by an ingenious assembly system using butterfly joints. This type of assembly requires a certain level of botanical and technical knowledge because the goal is to avoid warping the wood, which could affect or ruin the paint. It is logical to assume that Leonardo had these skills and that he was able to find a way to build this kind of system. Professor Terassi uses carbon-14 dating to date the painting's wooden base. Three wooden fragments of several milligrams are lifted from the back of the painting. The wood of the painting, like any vegetable or animal organism, contains carbon-14. When the organism dies, the amount of carbon-14 decreases over time. By measuring the amount remaining today, we can deduce the age of the wood.
It is important to note that carbon-14 dating does not establish when the panel was used as a base for a painting. The information collected pertains to the growth period of the tree that the wood comes from. And the period that we identified is somewhere between 1474 and 1517.